Kurong shop. I thought, perfect. This would make a wonderful... <laughs> this would make a wonderful Bible passion. <laughs> the size of it, the weight of it. But don't worry, don't be afraid. I can't use it because it's too heavy to lift it above my head. <laughs> I didn't think about that part. But praise God, let us see what he, he's got for us today. My dear wife, this is Brad and Ball. Um, we sang this song, it was the last song of last week. A prayer to God. And we loved singing it. And as we just, we're not going to sing it today. Where's, where's Kathy? <laughs> Almighty Christ, come forth in me. My will and my way, I yield to thee. Take all my life and make it anew that I might be controlled by you. When we prayed that, sang that last week, there was a part of that song which like was a miscord. It was a beautiful telling of something how we feel and we're telling God what we want deep down and that's our life journey to do exactly what we're singing here. To give God our life that he can be glorified and thereby we also be glorified by, by our God in heaven. But the one that struck a chord was the very last three words that I might be controlled by you. Who is in control of our lives? Who controls us? Do we want to be controlled? I'm 76. I came to the Lord when I was 23. In hospital for three months after birth, I, I um, was supposed to die. But a nurse, apparently, according to my mother, gave me brandy on a spoon. Wonderful bunch of stuff, that brandy. <laughs> but you see, God was there. Even this little baby, born in a household that was, in a sense, godless. There was no faith in that household. And this little baby was about to be expired. And they rang mum up, you, got, you better come, and, and it, it, we're not, it's not going to last a night. God was there. I started to grow up, and I had this, in, this, this instinctive um, awareness that God is real. I didn't put it there. It was just there. Did that make me a saint? No way. I just knew he was there. And as a child, after our English class, um, um, I began going to a scripture union meeting, just half an hour, and where I got my first Bible. And I, I was so proud of that, but to hear the scripture, something was bubbling inside my life. He was there when I ran in, in front of a firing squad of bricks and stones, and I copped one on my head from my brother. He was there. And when I ran across the road without looking and ended headfirst inside a sidecar of a motorbike and hit that side of my head. <laughs> it doesn't sound funny. That's exactly what happened. And I was carried home by this big guy who owned the bike. He was there. He was there when I grew up and I chose this, well, I went out with this girl for three years and we were going to get married. But something was wrong. Something wasn't right. And three times I broke that marriage off, that, that, that relationship off. And on the, the last day was when she had got the wedding dress. Mother was back in England, my father had died, and I just didn't feel this was right. It was the hardest thing ever. It, I, I just hated myself for what I, I, I had to do. But God was there. And I believe God was in it. Walking across the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the dance floor. 
I saw this girl, I thought, wow. I would just love to ask her for a dance, but it took courage, and the, the guys will know this. Procrastination, Do, dare I go, should I go? And eventually I walked, but it's too late. A man came and took that woman's hand onto the dance floor, and I thought, oh, woe is me. I look foolish, and I turned around, and I saw Shirley. And there was something about Shirley. <laughs> that, well, she doesn't even know this. I liked her instantly. I liked what I saw instantly. I didn't know God was in it at the time, but I do now, because it was through Shirley that I came to know the Lord as my saviour. She first, I resisted, foolishly resisted it, and, uh, and then did what I knew was right in my heart. Is it a good life? Is it, yes. Is it an easy life? No. Because God himself declares that, Jesus himself declares that the life, uh, walking with Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Saviour, is going to be a hard life. Fleshly speaking, the towing to and fro, my will or God's will, is always their intention. Particularly the guys, not, not so much the girls. The guys are always pulling back. When I spent a month um, in Adelaide to confirm whether or not I had religion, or I had God. Because I, I rejected the church when it was religious. There was something, I don't want religion, I want something real. So I tested it in Adelaide, and I was baptised in water in Adelaide, and I was filled with the Holy Spirit back home in, uh, in Belmont. We, we were saved in that Belmont Full Gospel Church in High Street, Belmont. That was our, our, um, our where, where we fellowshiped and, uh, and eventually lived for a while in that area, uh, Cassie. And God was there. All the time, God was leading. We, walked, we drove across the bridge in Geelong. It was a railway bridge uh, out towards, uh, driving towards uh, Carayo. Pouring rain. And the car went out of control and aqua planed across the road and hit the fence across there where, uh, uh, where the tram lines were, where the tr uh, train trams were. Track, train tracks were. No cars coming, no trucks. God was there. And all through my life, as we w went to Bible school, we, 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 we had a wonderful time together uh, in the Adelaide Bible School. Uh, um, um, uh, getting to know the God who loves us. And God was there. God was there. Even when I felt our, that my cup was half empty, it was half full. It was half full. Even when I strayed from that narrow way, which I did at times because of this towing, I didn't feel that like God controlled that situation, but he was there. So does God want, do you want God to be that controlling person? What is, what is God in essence? In essence, it's the essence of God. He's known as the God of love, isn't he? God is in essence, love. Don't worry, I'll get there. First Corinthians 13. First Corinthians 13, the famous chapter on love. I want to look into it and see what it says about this. Love suffers long and is kind. Is that God? He suffers long with us, doesn't he? Does he condemn us? 
Does it take us out of the world and say, I've had enough of you, get out of here? This that say verse 4, verse um, Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. When we read that, we are reading the essence of who God is. We're not there yet. We try, don't we? And, and, and some of those years, we, uh, as you get older in the Lord, you're able to be, be, uh, be changed um, through the Holy Spirit to be more godly in these things and not react to people around us who want to hurt us and, want, and, and, and we don't look for revenge. But nothing in there to, tells me that God is in control. Nothing. In fact, it's not whether or not do we want God to control us. Do I want God to control me? The question is, does God desire to control us? What's his will in that matter? We're asking him to do it here. So I did what every Christian does when he's going to bring the word, and I'm doing this to impress you. <laughs> Bought these in Bible school back in 71. The Ex Expository Dictionary, the New Testament Words by W.E. Vine. I can't find the word control. Anywhere in there. Not to be found. Okay. Just want to know what God want, wanted to and, um, tell me about control. So I went for a bigger book, The Analytic Concordance to the Bible by Young. Doesn't have the word control in it. God doesn't even speak the word control. It's not in God to control. So what gives? I mean, he is the God who um, is anything too hard for me. There's nothing beyond God's reach that he can do. But you see, God isn't like the Islamic God of Allah. And that's why they're not the same. He changes his mind and does what he likes. He's not principled in, 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 in the Quran or the Hadith. He does, his, he does as he likes because he's God, he can. Our God doesn't do what he likes because he's restricted by who he is. A holy, loving, just, merciful God. And in that sense, he couldn't control a people and make them do uh, what he wants. That's what we're saying here. We're saying, this is too hard for me. I'm trying. I want to be like you, God. Do it for me. That's not what we're saying. Be my control. Get in this, this, this here and, and make me go this way so I don't sin against you. It's not in God's purview. Like, it's not what, it's not his will, his plan to do that. Never has been. And that's what makes Christianity so different. He woos us with his love. He shows us his glory, his mercy, and his, the fearful side of him too. He doesn't hide anything. And then he says, I love you. And he says, I love you so much that I don't want you to face the destiny that you have while you are in your sin. Because there's nothing I can do about it except judge the sin in your life. He's bound by it. There's nothing he can do. The whole world was going to be brought to the brink of nothing 
Because every soul from Adam to the last soul born on earth will be judged because of the sin in their life and that is eternal judgment. God misses out. We miss out. Satan wins even though he's there. We're, we, he's got the whole world with him in hell and he's laughing at God in the pain and the suffering. It nearly happened back in the flood. You might remember nearly 2,000 years of, 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 of um, mankind ruling and reigning with, uh, uh, well, with the prince of darkness. Brought the whole world, except for one family, to the brink of destruction. Because he wooed the whole world at that time, and none would do the thing that God wanted, that is to honour him, except Noah and his family. And when facing that same situation again, in a very evil world, we're facing a people who want to take away from God the right to have a people, and that's why the war has been against you and me. And that's why it is difficult in the Christian walk. Not impossible, and not even drudgery, because, you see, God has given us everything we need to walk this life. If we use faith, and what, what I mean by faith is believe what God says he's doing for you. I give you the comforter. I give you the Holy Spirit who is not a, not, not, not a security blanket. You know, we think of comfort and, and we want to hide away with this blanket and we feel better. That's not the Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit is there to be with us in the times of trial. That's right. yeah. Testing. That we might be winning our race towards the heavenly call. He wants us to win. And so what does it do with this uh, uh, um, world that was going to hell? Literally, he sends his son into the world. Not a religion. A son that was destined, even through the scriptures, to, that scriptures might be fulfilled, to be the saviour of the world. None of us can. I mean, look at Prince Charles, poor Prince Charles. Dear, 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 dear. He wants to be, not the head, but he wants to promote every religion because every religion ends up with God. Now, in one sense, he's not wrong. Because we all stand before God when life comes to an end. Our body goes back to the grave, back to dust, or it goes to the grave, back to dust, from when God made it. But our soul goes to God. And there's only one question that God is going to want to know. What did you do with my son? Not how many, many times did you go to church. Even all the works that you might do because you feel like you need to be right with God, all your works are like nothing to God without Christ. Nothing. And in his life, God doesn't leave us doubting. In, in Jesus Christ's life and death and resurrection, he has left the evidence that all this was a reality, not a religion. He came, he showed the world that he was from heaven by what he did, recorded in the Gospels. He fulfilled every scripture about him and he's coming again. And how do we know that? Because the scriptures bear witness that when Israel is reborn, rebirthed in our day, in the last days, God will favour Israel once again 
and bless her and raise her up and no one will take those people out of their land ever again as God promised because Christ Jesus is returning in reality and he isn't going to be bringing with him a religion but a kingdom what does God say to his church his, di his disciples again said about teach us to pray and pray like this our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. Don't let us get so heavenly minded and think we've got nothing here to do. It is all being done on earth. He died on earth that we might also be, our soul might have that salvation for eternity in God's kingdom. But the work is here now. And if we don't do the work here and now, when is it going to get done? God isn't going to control you to do exactly what you need to do. Faith does that. Your love for God does that. When, when I went astray for a while, it was over, one of them times, it was over is, Islam. I was busy with my work, I had my own business, and it really did sap the time, literally. It was, it was a, a it was very, very difficult time. But we raised up three children on it. And I didn't like what was happening. I was afraid for our, our civilization, because the government was inviting a belief system within our midst and raising it up above Christianity. That's literally how they see it. It became preeminent. That name was Islam. And every one of us, when we buy food, we are paying a jizya back to Islam because of the halal certification system that they cleverly put in place and the government allowed it. So, what I'm getting at, I don't want to get sidetracked. I started to be concerned about these things. So I, I, I become an activist and I joined a variety of street groups and none of them really went anywhere that were trying to tell people, wake up. This is what's happening. No one, no, no one cared. The world was in slumber. Australians were in slumber. And we were ridiculed, we were persecuted by, by, by every, all and sundry. And um, I got to the place where I, I realized something terrible had happened. I was hating Muslims. Yes. I was a Christian. I wasn't in, in, in active, active, uh, active life in the church. I, I, I attended church and pretty much that was it during my, my work and um, business years. And I was allowing the people around me to hate Muslims. And I thought, whoa, that was the Holy Spirit. God was with me. And the Holy Spirit was saying, you're in danger. You're on the wrong path. You're, doing, you're going the wrong way. Because if you hate, it means you don't have any forgiveness and love. And if you don't have any forgiveness and love, your own salvation is in peril. So what happened? I thought, oh, I'm better change track. So I began to speak to Muslims. I would I'd buy the New Testaments and, 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 and go up to um, um, where, um, not Thomas Town, next to Thomas Town, where, where Ford's is, Barry Road. And I would have coffee and, and get to know the Muslims that were having coffee there and, and chatting around. And because I thought, I've got to love these people into the kingdom. And I remember one time going for a haircut there and I was told to get back around the back. It was a Muslim. It was run by Muslims. Go back where the girls are, where the women are. And I was going to get um, 
a haircut with a razor by a Muslim. And it, I don't know, I, I thought, well, no, I'll, I'll just watch him. <laughs> and he says to me, what do you do? I see you coming here regularly. What, what do you do? <laughs> That's telling the truth. I said, oh, I'm a Christian, and I'd just like to come and uh, speak with Muslims here about their faith and about my faith and about who Jesus Christ is. Ah, a big smile came on his face. Truly. He laughed, and he said to somebody else in, in, in Arabic, and they laughed, and... Oh, <laughs> there is nothing to fear. Because God was there. And God has a destiny. So what does he do? There's an Assyrian lady in a shop there, and she gives me a ticket to go and hear a, a um, debate between a man called Benny Power, and I forget the Muslim's name. I was pretty sure he might have come from Sydney. But they were debating about um, Islam and Christianity and is Islam violent and is the Christian faith violent it's interesting it was the best debate ever well I got to meet Bernie and Bernie said he's got some outreach tables well actually one in those days and he invited me to come and share the uh, um, on that outreach, which is what I'm doing today, what some five years later. Because God was there. God leading me because, I don't know, I, I have a sense of open doors. And I go down some, in through some doors and they're the wrong doors, but the Lord brings me back and says, no, 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 no. If the Lord had said to me, Keith, you know, or audibly said, Keith, I've got my will for you is you go down there to Melbourne and I want you to preach to those people. I would never have gone. I don't, I don't think. It would have been so, so scary. I don't know I, 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 to express. Too hard. Because I don't think I'm a preacher. I know I, I, know I share the word, but, but I don't have the mind and they, I, 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 um, and they put words together well to be a preacher in Melbourne. So what happens? I start going down, and a couple of weeks into it, I began the, the Holy Spirit started to 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 well up in me. I couldn't just stand there quietly with the tract in my hand. I had to call out. and challenge the people. That's how it started. And I began to challenge the people about where they are with God. And whether they believe God's real or is he a religion and, and lots of things. But the, what was the result? Zero. Hard faces, foreheads, stone forehead, foreheads, People just walking by, just not looking. And I said to my friend, Hani, he's, he's still there, with him there yesterday. And I quietly said to him, oh, Hani, I, I, I don't know whether I'm doing much good doing this, you know, like. And immediately, and this is how it happened. It, you know what Melbourne's like, Frank. Frank's sort of seen me down there. It is a noisy place. It is just full of action, people doing things. And so there's a tap on my shoulder. And as I'm, the words have left my mouth, saying to Hani, this tap on the shoulder and a, a word in my ear, and it was more than you think. It was for me. It was a personal thing for me. But I, at the time, I, I, it was evolving, like it was happening. I wasn't sure. Yeah, I turned around and there's this guy, he's in a suit and he sort of has a smile, he walks away a few paces, turns around and, and he said, with a big smile, and I should know. 
Not me, him. He should know. And disappeared. And I knew that God had sent him to encourage me that I was in his will. He could not have heard what I'd said to Hani. It was impossible in that day. But for the spirit, of course, he hears every word and whispers. You see, God was there. And I do it because I've grown to love this God and his son, Jesus Christ. And because he loves me, I've come to love the people around me. <laughs> Can't help it. Yeah. And even the haters. You feel for them, you pray for them. And there's many of them. But I'll tell you something. Not one person who's come to the flip chart, we have a flip chart, are you good enough for heaven? Are you good enough to be welcomed into the pearly gates? Not one has doubted the existence of God, argued the existence of God. There is still, in all the way the world is going, a lot of people out there who are aware that God is real, and you notice it. I don't know whether uh, 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 Greg noticed the same thing. They're looking at the table. They're looking at the people. They know you're there because God is doing a work in their lives in their, and, 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 and their challenge. And my preaching isn't like what I'm doing now, exhorting you to come and allow God to lead you. But it's, it's, it's almost like a prophet in a sense. It's saying that we all stand before God, every one of us, and without Christ you have no future that you want to be part of. And uh, God, uh, God has used it, and they come and take my tracks and my, and my Bibles. Why? Because I, I, I'm, I'm in God's will. Yeah. Now, you'll notice I haven't even looked at my notes, and that, so I, I sweated over this. <laughs> I, I, I was going to give you a biblical reason, which, where are we? What, what time? Okay. Does God control us? Well, if he was going to control us, he'd control us from the very beginning, wouldn't he? I mean, he's God, and he is responsible for everything he's made. In the animal world, he deposited in them instinct, a mechanism by which they know what to do. And I love feeding my magpies and seeing them hatch babies. It is a, it is a wonder. It, is, it just glorifies the Lord. But what, what happened when it comes to the ones he made in his image and likeness? Now I do need my notes. Genesis, of course, chapter 2. God's made the earth, the earth, the heavens, and everything. The last thing he makes, and, and everything was good at that point, and the last thing he makes is you and me. Man in his own image and likeness, he made us. And he puts Adam in the garden. And I don't know in that time where the time happened. There was no fall. I don't know. But I just had to, I, I, I use my imagination here. I couldn't imagine God creating this intelligent being, not something come out the swamp from a tadpole. He created him whole that he could not have spent a long time with him, teaching him, the attributes of the world from which he could uh, uh, 
use gadgets, make things to, for him to, to, to tend the garden. I'm sure he didn't have a cylinder mower like I would, would work, but, but I, I don't know. I don't know those things. But, but there would have been a, a lot of time spent with God, and God would, would have been like a, a wonderful relationship there as, 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 as Adam just is in awe of what God has provided him. Of course, then he made woman. <laughs> you know, Josh, I'm, I'm, I'm stirring you now. You see, we needed woman. He needed a helpmate, just like everything else he made that was living a helpmate. So, so um, what I'm getting at, I'm going to. What I'm getting at is, why did God, if He wants to control us, not control Adam and Eve when He warned them? He said, "Listen, this is all yours, right? Just do not eat of the the tree." Uh, of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't do that. That's one thing. Because the moment you do that is the moment you die. But he, did, he didn't control us. Look at the disaster he brought to the world because he's not a God who exercises love through control. You only find that through the labor of uh, oh, the... No, I always said the labor part. The labor part used to be good. It's been hijacked by the godless, yep. by those who are following, uh, uh, doing everything uh, by the prince of the power of the air. Uh, the evil things they've got for us, if God allows it, is absolutely beyond belief. Yes. I don't know whether you know. I, I, in fact, and one guy came up to me yesterday, who was a Christian. I was wearing my, my, my um, um, Return Jesus to Australia t-shirt. And he's very concerned about the way the world is going. And I saw me there. I used to be anxious. I used to be worried. And I was able to say, listen, the, m the more you look at what's coming, the more fearful you will be. And that's exactly what Satan wants. Look to Christ. Because no matter what we have to go through, he is going to be our savior. He is going to be our helper. He is going to be our strength. And whatever we go through isn't going to be anywhere near as hard as what we imagine. Good. Thank you. Very good. Yeah. And I think a lot of Christians are doing the same thing. They're, they're looking at the problem coming and not at, the, at the, the glorious Lord who knows all things that are coming. What about, okay, Adam sinned, Eve sinned. Thanks, Eve. And, <laughs> and they have sons, Cain and Abel. Cain thought he'd go and grow a crop. Again, they left out tools. But he grew a crop to eat. Abel had sheep. And it come to the time of sacrifice, you don't hear much about sacrifice then, do you? But it was there. It was instituted the moment life was taken to clothe us, to cover our, our, our um, the innocence was gone, to cover our guilt. And so Abel was understood this and offered the lamb. But Cain was too proud to go to his brother. I said, hang on, no, no, no. I put all my sweat and tears in this here. Why can't I just present what the, my, my work, my handiwork, to God and be, and, and, and be accepted? Seems reasonable, doesn't it? Don't we like to give God, uh, you know, show God like, like a child to a father? Look what I've done. But you see, without the blood of the innocent, None can be saved. A spiritual principle. And there's no blood and wheat. And he would have to humble himself, you know, and ask, buy whatever, a lamb 
from his brother to sacrifice to God for the, to cover his own sin. But God didn't force him. He said, be careful, Cain. Sin is at the doorstep and wants to control you. He didn't tell him not to. No, he warned him. He counseled him. But he allowed him to do it. And that's the same. I, I won't go any further. There's a lot more there. But he counseled him. And he didn't listen. And he killed his brother. Our works are like filthy rags. Before him. Filthy rags. No matter what we try and do, if it's not in his will, it's worthless. Be sure you're on that road. If, 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 you, if your life as a Christian is easy, question whether you're on that right road. Because the moment you walk with God, you know it. You know it. The moment you walk away from God, you know that too. And God will let you go for so far. And then what does he do? He brings you a, to a blank wall, the, the door you've got to open, this one or that one. He gives you a carnal experience. Who will you serve, Baal or God? We all have those moments, those times in our life. Stay with God knowing that he loves you, he wants to be in you, he wants to motivate you, he wants to, 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 to bless you with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places, that your life will be fruitful, and my life is fruitful, and not do the things that we think God likes, but we know well that God didn't, didn't approve of those. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. It is what keeps us together. It is what motivates us. It's what gives us hope. If you were a God who controls, we would be a most miserable people because you've made us free. You set Adam free to stand on his own two feet. But he chose to know what it's like to be like God by eating of the fruit. And now here we are at the end of the age. Expectancy of the Lord Jesus Christ is ever increasing. Jerusalem is built. The world is getting very, very dark. And there's going to be another Mount Carmel coming. And Father, we know that we're on the right side. It's the side that wins for you. You are winners because of your love, your grace, your amazing long-suffering over our lives as we struggle to find our way. And we look forward to being there with you serving and worshipping and loving and honouring the Lord Jesus Christ as he reigns on this earth as King of all the earth, King of kings and the Lord of lords. In Jesus' name, bless this fellowship here. Bless the fellowships in Ballarat and in Victoria that your name will be glorified in this land like no other. In the name of Jesus Christ we ask. Amen. Amen.